God says, be still and know that I am God. And that means that it doesn't depend on you and me and all our efforts. It just depends on God and his grace. This is Hope Today. I'm so glad you joined us. Hope you had a great Labor Day weekend. I know I did. Look, I'm still casual, <laughs> even through Labor Day weekend. By the way, I'm Tom. I'm here with Anna and Sydney. We have an important and incredible story today. Sydney. Yeah, coming up on Hope Today, from witch to ordained minister, you don't want to miss the God story of a woman named Cindy who was a former high High priestess from Western Pennsylvania who had a supernatural encounter with Jesus and her life hasn't been the same since. That's coming up in a few moments. You definitely don't want to miss this. I mean, Anna, I love stories and I love testimonies, but there are some that just really stick with you. And this one I really feel is going to be life transforming for so many of our viewers out there. Yeah, I remember when you first connected with this woman and started hearing her story and just the excitement of Cindy, like we have to tell her story of what God did in her life to know that God can miraculously step into the deepest darkness is such an encouragement for us to bring hope into our darkness. And so, and also just the awareness of the reality of the spiritual world. We have the, the, the spiritual forces of God and then we have the spiritual forces of Satan and to to recognize that reality, to talk about it, is important because it's affecting our lives every day. Well, it is, and you know, we don't know all the things that go on in people's lives behind the scenes, but God does. One day God's just gonna kind of empty the world out. We're gonna see everything, everything. There's nothing that's gonna be hidden. Right. And so, you know, we know that God has a desire to save each one of us from those things that are in the world. In fact, we're right in the middle of telling our story. Sydney, you did it on Friday. I, I had the opportunity last week. I don't know, when are you coming up? Next week. Next I week, think, yeah. you're coming up. Next so week. all of our hosts are telling their stories. And this is another God story that we're going to be sharing today that, that, that you see that God enters into a person's life and changes everything, makes uh, what, what was not into what he wants it to be. And he has that for you today. I hope that you're seeking him and desiring his work in your life because that's what he wants to do. He wants to get on the inside and begin to put things to right. Listen, there's a lot of things in, the, in, in this world world that have messed us up. The world of flesh and the devil, they've gotten in there and messed us up. God wants to get in there, save our souls, put ourselves to right, put us on the right path. You know, Tom, I think this is a really important conversation, even when we're about to watch Cindy's God story in just a moment, because I was just at Marshall's over the Labor Day holiday weekend, and really a lot of things that there's so many occult things, there's so many things that are like the tarot cards, the crystals, if you're burning sage, this is bombarding our culture, and it is a reality. So I just want to encourage you today. I mean, I feel like if you've been shopping and you look around, I mean, Halloween stuff is all out. Like, this is a very serious thing that we as Christians need to be aware. Well, you know, Cindy spent years years in the occult until one day a supernatural encounter changed her life forever. Here's her God story. I looked like your average citizen with, you know, um, three kids, parents that I came back who was, my father was still a pastor. I would still attend holiday services at his church. I had to hold up that facade, but then come holiday times for the occult, which there are several throughout the year, I would be gone three, four, five days at a time because I had to go take care of the rituals. I had to go be in charge. I had to do this. I would leave my husband and my kids. And it was not the easiest thing ever. It was, even then was hard for me as a parent to leave, but I didn't know any way to get out. You know, the enemy comes to steal, conquer, destroy, separate, and he separates families. And that's what he did with us because I always felt that my parents were more involved with the church and my other siblings than me. So I was always looking outside our house for somebody to, to love me. My father was a pastor, my mother was a nurse and then a teacher. Um, but it, I didn't learn until I was much later that I had an identical twin sister who tragically we lost at a young age and my parents kind of just really shut down and I can't imagine how hard it would be to lose a child, much less lose a child and have a remaining child that looked exactly like them. It was very difficult for me to um, find affection at home. My parents were great parents and they gave me everything I could have, but 
just emotionally, it was a very different situation. My brother and sister were very hugged upon and kissed upon, and me, I was just there. Into my teens, I found a young girl that became my best friend. But the funny thing was, she wanted to go to church, and I didn't. So she would, all the time with my parents, I started hanging with her mother, who just was like, became my second mom and started seeing in me and giving me the things my parents never did. That love, that, oh, you're great, you're wonderful. And then started to show me what she believed, which was she owned a bookstore, which was an occult bookstore, and she was in um, witchcraft. So she started to show me the powers of the other side that as a 16 year old are magical. I mean, not just magical, but like here I have power. And it was something that I started to crave. And she saw in me this ability. You know, she would always tell me, this is what you were born for. And it was just wonderful. It was like I could have whatever I wanted. I just had to follow these dark arts to get there. So she just started grooming me more into that and showing me um, spells, incantations, how to have power over people, how to manipulate people. Because not only was it the incantations, but you learn to manipulate how people think about you, how people um, perceive you, how they start thinking about their surroundings. This lady, like, she had other connections in higher parts of the occult. So she saw in me something she couldn't continue to teach. So she took me to other people to be groomed. And I was starting to be groomed as a priestess, as a leader in the occult. So there are three parts of the occult, the maiden, the witch, and the crone, or the maiden, the, the priestess, and the crone. And they started to initiate me into that maiden slot. So there are many different um, things you had to learn. Uh, very different trials you went through and initiations. There's actually 13 total. Surprise, surprise. Each initiation was a different power. Each initiation was a different task until you got to the 12th, which was they gave you or appointed you a spirit guide, which is nothing more than a demon that attaches to you specifically. There's one more final um, initiation that is to test your, really to test your, um, are you going to be able to hang or are you going to give all your loyalty to Satan and it it was uh, giving up a child. I, I became pregnant. I was only six months pregnant at the time. Um, the day was May Day or what we in the occult called Beltane and it is the day of renewal. But this particular day my handler, because everyone that is being trained has a handler, gave me something to drink. Um, and I became very ill and basically aborted the baby that evening. But as I did, it was my job to then lay her on that stone altar and, and give her away. It was a very dark time in my life where I had to make that decision. And I felt I had no way out by that point. It was either lay this child on the altar or lay on the altar myself. You, there was no other choices. And there's no way out. It's either do this or die. I moved out to Las Vegas because there was a church that they wanted to infiltrate. And I came from a pastor's home. If anybody knows how to get into a church, it is somebody that it was brought up in the church. So they would use me that way. But in that time, I met a man who they never wanted me to marry. So I met my husband who is, we've been married now for 31 years. But, I, but when I married him, I lost my standing. I lost where I was going. I would have been a higher up person, perhaps, if, if I had not married him. But God knew at that time what I needed. Um, I didn't understand it. Shortly after my second child was born, they said, we're gonna move you home. We have a position for you. There is a high priestess job in Southwestern Pennsylvania. And um, we, have groomed you for that. So you're going to come back and take over that position. When you're in the occult, you're always looking over your shoulder because somebody either wants your position. If you don't do what they want, there's a punishment involved. 
if you do what they want and it doesn't successful, there's a punishment involved. Being back home was hard. I had to connect because I lived two separate lives at that point. I looked like your average citizen with, you know, um, three kids, parents that I came back who was, my father was still a pastor. I would still attend holiday services at his church. I had to hold up that facade, but then come holiday times for the occult, which there are several throughout the year, I would be gone three, four, five days at a time because I had to go take care of the rituals. I had to go be in charge. I had to do this. I would leave my husband and my kids. And it was not the easiest thing ever. It was, even then was hard for me as a parent to leave, but I didn't know any way to get out. I knew, you know, this was my life and this is what I had chosen. This is what I was made to do. That, that's the biggest one. It, they tell you, this is what you were born to do. This is who you were born to be. And that's not always the truth. Um, God has a plan. He knows where we're born to do and be um, far more than the world and the occult. I, I feared my life and I did all the time. There was somebody always looking to take my position. Late 2013, early 2014, a young lady came to this area who wanted my position. And like I said, you're, you're looking behind your back all the time because somebody wants you. And witch battling is a whole different ball game. It's really hard to, to even get you to fathom. I had done every incantation, every spell, everything that I knew to try to get rid of this girl or at least subdue her. And um, on July 14th, 2014, I was in a trance, um, in a state of being that is not here on earth. It's, there is a plane between heaven and here, and it's called the astral plane, and that's where a lot of things happen in, in the spiritual realm with um, the occult. Um, astral plane, you often get there by relaxation, and you'll, you'll hear people talk about transcendental meditation, um, and that will actually get you there. You, you, it's an outer body experience. Your soul leaves and goes to the, the plane where you can do incantations. You can actually have meetings. You can all kinds of stuff. I think I joke a lot of times with people, it was like Harry Potter dueling. There was one witch on one side with a wand, one witch on the other, and we were just kind of at that standstill. Like, I didn't know what else to do. I had done everything that I had ever learned, and I had been in the, the craft for 30 years. So I knew a lot of spells, I knew a lot of incantations, but I could not subdue this young lady. And at that moment, the name of Jesus came out of my mouth. And this dark plane went completely light. I watched demons run to the outskirts and I fell back into earth, into my body, which is not a great feeling um, when you're in those kind of states because it's, like like, it's like waking up in a moment and your heart stops. So I fell back in my body and I didn't know what to do. I mean, I was like, okay, now what? Because I have said the name of Jesus that I have heard makes everything go away. But I also knew that I wasn't serving that God. I was serving his enemy. And now here I am. I had one Christian friend through um, the Renaissance Festival that I knew who I ended up calling who sat up with me all night and tried to explain with me, got me to her church. Did I accept Jesus on that night? No. It took me, it took me several days um, to really wrap my head around what I thought was real and what was really real. And then God delivered me. He baptized me and like all demonic energy stopped because Satan is such a legalist. So once I was baptized, he had no legal tie anymore. And I started renouncing the things that I had done and the demons and the spirits just started to fall away and my continent started to change. And, I, and towards the end, my husband and I started to renew our relationship in 2016. By January of 2017, my husband was saved and he was baptized. And that year we, we celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary 
And we did it in the church, going back to where he met me. I was in my deepest, darkest, lowest place. And in Psalms 139, it says, even in the darkness, I try to hide from you, but your light is all around me. When I said the name of Jesus, literally, I, that was that came out of my mouth, so we have that taste, that part of the mouth, I said the name of Jesus, the light engulfed me. I mean, it took a very dark place and blew it up. I mean, I sometimes say, I feel like, feel like Saul on that road to Damascus with that bright, bright light that just flashed because he had, God had to show him that he was real too. If he had not, if not shown me that Jesus was real and I really had to see it for myself or I would have never believed it. I was so, my heart was so hardened that unless he physically showed up, I wasn't gonna believe it. And that's what it took. So tasting it by speaking the words of Jesus out of my mouth and then seeing it with my own eyes. I mean, it was just amazing. I didn't think so at the time, but, but now I, I really see the amazement of how much he was in control, even in those dark places. What an incredible God story by Cindy. And Cindy, we know you're watching. We we'll just say thank you so much for sharing your story, for your courage, for your bravery, and just opening up. I mean, it is amazing that at the name of Jesus, everything shifts, everything changes, deliverance happens, redemption happens. And you know, just Tom and Anna, just listening to her story and watching that, there's just so much that comes to mind. And I just think there's so many people that are in strongholds, that are walking in occult things, they're just dealing with so many things, but this just speaks and shows that through Jesus, anything is possible and we see redemption like never before, Anna. Yeah, that's right, he truly is the chain breaker. Today, if you're watching and you're struggling with something that just feels like it's bound so tightly around you, whether it is fear, depression, shame, guilt, know that those things are from the enemy, then he is trying to hold you down. But when you are in Jesus Christ, he cannot hold you down because Jesus has set you free and all you have to do is call on the name of Jesus. You know, I'm, I'm, th I'm thinking of the verse, he has translated us out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of his own dear son. So all of us, we don't have a story like Cindy's, but all of us have come out of that kingdom of darkness. And it doesn't matter how far in that kingdom of darkness, let's say Cindy probably was pretty far over there, but we were all over there. We're all in this kingdom of darkness. He's translated us now, if you're a Christian, into that kingdom of his own dear son. Our relationship with Jesus Christ is what God is offering to you today. You know, he, he, he makes that offer to us and says, come unto me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, I will give you rest. What an incredible promise, what an incredible thing. But it starts with that relationship. Cindy had to open that door of her life to Christ. It took a little while for her to, to understand, but she saw power in the name of Jesus, power to translate her from the darkness to the light. Do you want that today? If you do, you just need to open that door and say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Be my Lord and Savior. Translate me into who you want me to be. She really found who she was meant to be when she took that step. So take that step today of crying out to God, of seeking him and, and, and entering into that relationship with him. You know, Tom, as you were just speaking, I just want to speak to the person that is right now deep in occult practices, that maybe you are looking at horoscopes, that used to be me. If you are looking at tarot card readings, if you have crystals and you have sage, those are occult things. And the one thing just want to encourage you today, get rid of those idols that are in your home. Do not go to the tarot card reader. Do not look for the horoscope to know what your future is. All of these things right now are so embedded in our culture that the enemy is trying to stray us away from the truth. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And I am one of those that I was practicing occult things, didn't even know what's happening. I remember going to sleepovers and there was a Ouija board. All of these things 
that are in our culture. But Jesus is saying this now is the time to turn from. You have no idea how many open doors that you're allowing into your life, you're allowing into your home, you're allowing into your family. So right now, I just believe that God just like put that in my spirit, that it is time for you to cleanse out your house, to go through your home and get rid of those things that have opened the door. Even when Halloween's coming up, we see Halloween decorations are everywhere. Can we? Can I tell you something Cindy has told me is that that is a, that it's like it's um, Beltane, like there's these holidays and these festivals that we don't even understand that we are entertaining. So we just wanna pray for you right now. So Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for the person that's watching, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you are a redeemer, that you are a deliverer, Father God, that you are the one that pulls us out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. And Father God, I pray for that person right now that has been on the fence, oh God, that person that may have not even understood that horoscopes and tarot cards and sages and crystals and all of those things are opening them up to things that they don't even necessarily understand. Or maybe there's that person right now that the witch is watching and she saw Cindy's testimony and she feels so torn. Lord God, in the name of Jesus, we just declare Jesus. and decree, Father God, that they are gonna come to know you, Father God. God, I pray right now in the mighty name of Jesus that you would encounter them, Father God, in their living room or their bedroom or wherever they're watching, God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And if you wanna give us a call to our prayer line, call us at 888-665. 4483. Well, we're going to take a quick break and when we come back, we're going to go into our day of prayer. You don't want to miss our topic for today. We'll be right back. Every now and then life gets the best of us and we need a reminder to keep calm and trust God. Simple but striking, the Keep Calm and Trust God box of blessings provides messages of reassurance to help carry you through tough and challenging times. These small cards fit into the palm of your hand and will turn your focus to the one who is in control of everything. Inside, you'll find 51 colorful double-sided cards featuring a combination of inspirational scripture verses and faith-based quotes. Add it to a get well basket or use it to encourage a teacher, family member, or friend. Or save it for the time you need encouragement. Be sure to ask for the Keep Calm and Trust God box of blessings when you give today. It's our way of saying thanks as you encourage others by providing life-changing Christian television through Cornerstone TV. Call us at 888-665-4483 or give at ctvn.org slash donate. Welcome back to Hope Today. We're so glad that you're with us on this Tuesday. So we hope that you've been joining along with us through our 21 days of prayer. And I love our topic for today because it is about protection over marriages. And as we were just talking about the occult, about the enemy and how he wants to infiltrate, we know that in marriages is one of the one of the primary places that he's trying to go to, to break down marriages, to break down families, because that is the core of communities, of, of towns, of the world. And so today we want to pray over your marriage, over your family, but we also want to start by bringing God's word into this. And it comes from Proverbs 24, three and four. It says this, by wisdom, a house is built, and through understanding, it is established. Through knowledge, its rooms are filled with rare and beautiful treasures. And you guys, I just love this scripture so much because um, I have been around long enough and have also experienced a house where there has been a lot of breakdown and a lot of division and just the fallouts from that. And then I'm also getting to experience building a new uh, relationship where God is at the center. And so when the scripture is talking about that wisdom, about that knowledge and building a house, whether that is a marriage, whether it is a family that we face hardships even in those godly relationships where we need the wisdom of God. As we have children, listen, I have teenagers and woo, I wish I could go back to the days of potty training being the biggest issues, but we need wisdom every step of the way to build these relationships so that they can stay on course and glorify God. Yeah, you know, uh, I, I love this verse. In fact, in the New Living, it says, a house is built by wisdom and becomes strong through good sense. 
which I, I love that. It, it does come, you know, wisdom is good sense, but I, I, I just, uh, you know, uh, I, I feel strongly that we need to just understand prayer. We're in this 21 days of prayer. We're in this time. It's interesting, related to Cindy, what we just heard from Cindy, is that she was trying to control her environment, control the situation through incantations, through all these witchcraft type things. Prayer is absolutely the opposite of that. It is relinquishing control to God. It is not trying to control the situation. It is saying, God, I'm laying it all on the altar for you. I am putting everything at your feet and saying, God, you take control, do your will. When, when, sometimes I think as, uh, as spirit-filled Christians, we, we kind of don't like the idea of saying, uh, thy will be done. But there's no greater prayer you can pray than thy will be done because his will is what will be the ultimate reality for us, the ultimate place where we want to be. That's where you need to be today. That's where we all need to be, that place of trusting God through those hard times. So important. I like what you just said, Tom, about laying it on the altar. And so we're talking about marriages today. And I just want to speak to you right now that maybe your husband or your wife and you have to in the season where it's hard. Marriage is hard, hard work. And we see the enemy fights all the time. The moment you like, I feel like when you, you know, I remember getting married and it was like on the honeymoon. It was like, whoop, here we go. You can feel the tension. You can feel the stress. You can feel the enemy coming at marriages because I love what Anna said, because that is the beginning of everything. That's the beginning of our families, of our communities, of our nation and our world. And we see how high the divorce rate is. We see in our families, like many of us have come from broken homes and we see like the dissolve of marriage. But today I just want to encourage you, pray for your marriage. And maybe it is at a standstill and maybe it's at a hard place. Put it on the altar and give your spouse back to God and watch what God will do. Pray for that person, but put it on the altar today. And one thing I love when we were watching Cindy's story, we saw how she was in a place of darkness. And then as God brought out how he literally knit their marriage back together again, I truly believe that we are in a season where God is about to show up and show out, especially when it comes on marriage. And so even today, if you'd like pray over your marriage, sometimes you have to speak over your spouse, speak over your husband, speak over your wife and declare the things of the Lord over them and ask that they'd be led by wisdom. Ask and pray, like turn their heart of stone into a heart of flesh. Ask them to know the heart of the Father like never before. And so, you know, our prayer line is always open at 888-665-4483. Well, we are so glad that you joined us for this very special hope today. And we just pray that you would know that God is in the midst of your circumstance. And the greatest hope that we have is in Christ and Christ alone. And he is the ruler of our hearts.